Hey everyone, Shaver1000 here. Today we're going to continue work on the Manco Thunderbird. Um, I did get some new parts. We got the engine ready, it's right there. Uh, like I got a new sprocket. <coughs> this sprocket is just a little bit too small for this thing. This is built for speed, and this thing would have been fast had that engine been running right. But the thing of it is, is it doesn't want to take off because, you know, it doesn't have enough torque. It's all for speed. So I got a new sprocket, chain, and clutch. Because this clutch, though it was working, it's a little on the worn side. I, side. I don't want to sell something like that, you know. So, now, but the chain if you look at that chain it's not supposed to be slanting down like that what happens is it gets caught between the sprocket and the wheel as it's turning and <clears throat> if it comes off and as the wheels turning forward it wants to put that chain down like that and it's probably what happened to that rim right there so but if you look look up through there <laughs> see how it's pointing down to the right real bad. <laughs> yeah, that's not supposed to be doing that. So, uh, it's bent. It's bent chain. So, I did notice uh, someone's got a half link here and didn't put the cotter pin in it. Uh, this chain from here up into here somewhere you can see it's See how it's a different color? It's been added on to. Um, so, this chain's coming off. We're going to put a regular mini bike or go kart chain on it. I was going to strip it all down, but I don't think so. I think I'm just going to yank this engine off. This engine did all right on here. So, this is this be a good little go kart engine. The tank's bad. So, the tank leaks. So, um, yeah, I think we're just going to hose it off, clean it up, and uh, we'll put the stage one engine on here. And I've got grips uh, and a Twistler Auto Fort. Yeah, I think I'm just going to clean it up. It looks okay. I'm just going to clean it up and uh... <laughs> Monkey just locked him out. <laughs> So, on to the intro. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, Bruno was out here in the garage with me, and Monkey closed the garage door. So, he got nervous and went prancing real fast to the front door, and it was closed. He's like, oh my God, I'm locked out. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and we're going to get this engine off here. Like I said, this is a good little mini bike engine, you know, for youth. Um, you know, if you're going to, if you be, if you're going to, you know, like I said, I, I could have bought a carburetor and a, uh, clutch for this thing for that Briggs and Stratton engine but we're up here um, I knew if I put that six and a half horse on here I would want to keep it and I bought this to resell I was going to strip it down and clean it all up but I don't think I'm going to the paint's not that great on it it's okay up in here but down in here it's not you know from the grease and oil so we're going to take that back wheel off anyway. But we'll just um, spray it down and we'll uh, we'll just uh, clean it up. <laughs> this sounds like neighbor's yelling at his dog. Okay. Yeah, this is a this is a brake assembly off of a 
<laughs> an electric scooter that I saved for parts. Oh, I actually have two of them. And we was using it for the throttle, so. But since we have a regular throttle now. All right, so we got this off of here. This is right now. I'll get you back down here. Um, I know the the uh, the lighting's not that great, and I'm sorry, but you know I can't sit out in the sun anymore. And if I bring a light out, it either makes it worse or it doesn't do anything at all. So uh, I'm just going to take these bolts out. Yank this engine off here, and then we might, we might, uh, I think I'll get the little pressure washer out. And, uh, we'll pressure wash what we can. And then, like I said, um, we're not restoring this bike. We're just trying to make a good running bike for some kid, you know, to enjoy. Or an adult, if somebody wants to give me a little extra money, on that Briggs and Stratton, I'll throw it in too. They'll have to buy a clutch and a carburetor, but I can prove to them that it runs, that's for sure. You guys was with me on that. These are stainless steel bolts. <laughs> Hate using my stainless on stuff like this. Monkey's got a lot of my stainless bolts and screws and her things. You got a bolt for this? You got a screw for this? And it's always, the only ones I got stainless. <laughs> like, man, you're using all my good hardware. Well, that's what it's for, right? Well, yeah, kind of, but. So, at stage one, I think will make somebody a nice little motor, a nice little engine. Um, You know, for a kid, first mini bike or whatever, you know. There we go. This need to take that clutch off of here. Okay, and one engine. There goes my chair. Has been removed. But uh yeah, I think I'll I'll go ahead and put this out here in the driveway and get this all pressure washed. The wheels. I think these fenders will clean up nice. That one's got a little rub in it, but other than that, they're pretty decent. Um Yeah, so the seat's okay. It does have one one rip in it. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. These shocks are adjustable. You can turn these pieces right here. Turn them to different settings to kind of raise it up. Or It doesn't so much as raise it up as it does stiffen it up, but I'm just going to leave it where it is right now. And there's part of an old chain guard on there. And I'm not sure how it's supposed to go or even if it's on right, but I'll have to, uh, I'm probably just going to take it off and whoever buys it can have it in case they want to do something with it. Yeah, that's another thing. They'll have to get a, uh, you know, chain guard for it. I'm, you know, I, I can't, you know, I can't 100% restore it and then expect to make any money out of it, you know? So... If I was going to keep it, it would have all that. But uh, here's another adjustment for shock here, which will also raise it up a little higher. If you move this shock up into there, uh, it'll raise the seat up higher. All right, well, let me get this down off here and get the pressure washer ready. Okay, so this chain, like I said, it's bent. It's worn out from here to here. Someone's either, <laughs> uh, my guess would be they used the old chain, some of the old chain to make what they needed. Uh, it is bent, but 
what these these are good for i'm not going to throw it away they make good well you can see the bend right there how it starts going down they make good uh go-kart steering wheels or golf cart steering wheels put around something round and tack each one of them this is called a half link which i don't know why you would need a half link on something that's as adjustable as these are but they did what they had to do i guess and that's what i would do if you know all i needed was a chain and i had to i had a half link but like here where the new chain meets the old chain you can see where this has been grounded down right there and what they've done was knock this link out and put that in there and put it back on and paint it back together so i'm going to put a piece of wire in there so i don't lose that because that's a special pin and these half links are handy on certain things i don't know why you would need it on this thing but it is handy on certain things so I'm going to put a little piece of wire in there just so I don't lose it. And I will save that chain. Um, it's way too big of a chain that needs to be on that thing. This is a 420. 428. So, you know, I'm putting a number 35 chain on it. That's what it would have had out of the factory. That's what most, you know, 90% of your go-karts and mini bikes out of the factory, they run a 35 chain. So I just wanted to explain that to you. That's a half link there. I got the bike over there. I'm gonna get the pressure washer out. Let's spray it down. So I changed my mind. I got the big boy out. But that's because my little one, the battery's dead. So I don't wanna wait on it to charge. So let's fire this thing up. We'll get what we can cleaned off of here. always run that thing out of gas I'll shut the gas off and run it out so there's no gas in the uh, in the system or in the carburetor all right first crank and I haven't had it running since we did the build on it remember we did the build on that thing and then uh, yeah first crank man Wow cool all right I just used the uh, just the general tip they called it uh, let me get that well, I'm gonna let it dry for a few minutes and then I'll get it back up on the table and we'll commence to commencing we'll get that guard off of there get the back wheel off and uh, get that sprocket changed looks like I'm gonna need a couple bolts for it and then we'll start putting it together we'll get that engine on get the chain on and uh, yeah we'll go from there okay so let's Take this little guard off of here. Like I said, I don't know. Seems like it's bent. I don't know if it's supposed to be straight. I, I haven't really seen one with the original guards on it, so. All right. 
Yeah, she's kind of bent up a little bit. I'm going to uh, I'm going to break this uh, bolt loose or this nut loose on the axle first. The monkey's getting ready to do a video, and I don't want to run too much stuff, loud things out here while she's trying to film. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to do that real quick. here alright now let's bring you over here I'm going to set you up over this way so then we'll take this uh, we'll take this wheel off and I'm going to set it down on a 2 before. It should set pretty flat for me. I hope. Just have to see. Alright, let me grab a piece of wood. Not sure about this block of wood because of that break, but... will work okay now this is what we're going to get on to next I've got two bolts in one's crooked maybe even bent I think the sprockets okay I can save that sprocket it's a little worn teeth are a little sharp but not bad It'd be all right for a go-kart or something so we'll get on to this next okay How many gearheads out there <laughs> ever change the sprocket and run your knuckles down across them cogs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's always that's always nice. Okay, so guys, again, this it's not really a how-to. It's just kind of what we're doing. We're just uh, building an old mini bike to resell. Yeah, like that. Almost got me, didn't it? Hopefully, the new sprocket will fit right on here. I don't like the looks of these bolts. I'll probably put new bolts in it. These are 9 16 headed. They don't need to be that strong. Half inch will be fine. Uh, Okay, let me get my new sprocket, fingers crossed, it'll fit. Have a 72 tooth, 35, number 35 chain. Looks like these two might be a little off. 
but I'm not going to be using these bolts. I'm going to put probably, I think I got some of these somewhere. Alright, so that's going to work. I just got to make sure whatever bolts I put in there, it's going to, you know, it's going to be straight. Because if it's, you know, kind of, of course that's exaggerated, but that'll throw your chain off. And it's, not, it's not good when that happens. So I may have to uh, put two smaller ones. And these ones that'll work then I can put bigger ones in these ones I don't know but let me let me find some bolts and we'll get this bolted up meantime I'm gonna wipe that top that wheel out I'm not gonna bore you with that I right, check this out guys glass cleaner from Dollar General this is not Windex. Well, it says great value, but this is a refill um, from the Dollar General. That grease on there. I use this stuff for a lot of stuff. Look at that grease. Gone. Gone. <laughs> That's a scratch. So, But, yeah, look at that. Just cleans that wheel up. I had to take this out anyway to get because this was too close to the wheel to get to them nuts so but yeah look how I'll clean that more here in a second but see how dirty that is should have brought out more paper towels I think there's some in the truck look at that very nice Just cleans it right up. Just wanted to share that with you. Doesn't hurt the paint. I use that stuff on wood, like the coffee tables, your coffee tables, your end tables. Uh, doesn't hurt it. So there you go. Quick tip. So it's getting ready to put these lug nuts back on. Man, them things are ugly. So I got me some Chevy lug nuts here, GM lug nuts. I'm willing to part with because they're not in that great a shape but they look a damn sight better than those things right so I don't hear monkey talking so I'm gonna do this real quick so I don't interrupt her with her videos she works so hard you know for her videos and uh, I don't like messing with her now her on the other hand she don't mind messing with me no <laughs> this down in here is what it's gonna be a pain in the ass uh, when you go to put your bolt in and when it's standing up like that you know that wants to go down and you got to try to well, it went right in there, but I may have to lean the bike over, but you know, it's not a it's not a big deal, but All right, so I'm gonna put some air in here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this up here and I'm gonna shove this through there just kind of like if I was putting the axle in and that should help hold that piece inside there straight for me so I can get Get the axle in so it's actually got to go on this way
There we go. Now that should hold it straight for us. Then we'll push the axle in through. There we go. And just push this out the other side. Handy little trick. Now, there's no adjustment here. You just put your nut back on wherever I put it. Anyway, we'll put the nut on this side. Then we're going to move on to putting the engine on. All right. Now, put this boy on here. Okay, these bolts aren't going to work. They're too long. So, let me see. Uh, I took shorter ones out, I thought. But, um, let me find some shorter bolts. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think it only had two bolts in it when I got it. And those two are now in the sprocket, but I found four bolts that'll fit fine. Okay, well that one bolt, I'm gonna have to find a nut for but the rest of these will work. Let me take this one out now. Alright, now I'm not going to tighten him up because i got to adjust the chain yet. So, let me find a nut that will fit this bolt. And then we'll be, we'll be ready to work on this chain And while well, we got to put the clutch on. Okay, now our other clutch had set screws that held it on. I don't think this one does, so, but it is threaded there, which... I'm sure it'll be metric, or I'm sure I'm not going to have what I need for it. This has already got a key in it. That's good. All right, so I'm going to have to clean this up to get this to fit. It is 5 8 shaft, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's starting. There it goes. And that's going to go on there like that. See, there's no set screws in this one, so there's supposed to be a... A bolt that goes in here and well I don't I don't have that bolt it didn't come with that bolt when I got it so I'm gonna have to try to find a bolt that'll fit in there and then uh, this is not a high performance clutch just uh, rugged outdoor products I mean it's just a it's just a clutch but so I'm going to see if I can find a bolt that'll fit in there and that'll hold our clutch on because if not, you know, that clutch, will, that clutch will fall off. And then we have our chain here. Got a nice brand new chain. It's a pretty decent chain. It's not a, again, it's not high performance. It's just a number 35 chain. I got 10 feet of it. Five feet was almost $12. Well, 
yeah five feet was like 12 bucks I got 10 feet for 17 so but and this is supposed to come with a master link it looks like the master links in it of course I'm gonna have to break it down which I did buy a new chain break I haven't had a chain break in years that's one of those things I'm only going to use once or twice a year but man when I use it it's a godsend you know so I'm guessing the master length is in here this chain is printed 35 so I gotta find a master link take it out so I can put the chain on there it is there's the master link right there see it's a real see how different it is you just pop that clip off there and that link will come out so yeah all right now so that's what we're going to do and uh and then what what i like doing is move this almost all the way back until the chain or and then i'll put the adjust the chain and mark the chain where i gotta break it to where it's just a little bit loose that way i got room because these chains will stretch yes guys they will stretch so if you have your engine all the way forward you put your chain on you have no adjustment so we'll get to that here in a minute i gotta kind of hurry it looks like i got some rain clouds coming in on me all right now got the master link out i said i don't know why the other one had a half link in but i didn't see a master link so they might have did that to use as a master link might that would be my guess because you don't need a half link on you shouldn't need a half link on something like this so that master link for sure man all right so i'm going to break my chain right there and the master link's going to go in right there so uh and i didn't bring anything to mark that with i'm sorry i got this thing it's like 18 bucks but again, I mean, they sell cheap ones, really, really rinky-dink ones. Um, but, you know, if you're going to get something like this, whoa, your best bet is to get a good one and be done with it. break and that's exactly what it's called it's called a chain break so I want to take this link out right here so I'm gonna get this put on maybe there we go what that does it pushes that pin it pushes that pin through for you now they do make different sizes of this but this one will fit 35 on up to 40 something or 50 something so this work on that other chain that 
other big chain if we needed it to. But I don't know if you can tell that, but it is. See, it's pushing that pin through. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to push this pin through, and then uh, we'll put the master link in. Okay, I got the chain and clutch and sprocket and everything on there. And uh seems to be fine. Now this will stretch a little bit, and I'll readjust it again once it's run in. But right now, that'll be fine. And, uh, man, I had to go through all my bolts to find one to fit that. Then I couldn't find the exact washer I needed, so I just doubled up a couple big flat washers. That'll work. This is for the kill switch over here. So, it's starting to rain. That's why I just went ahead and kind of got some things going here because, you know, rain. <laughs> All right, what are we gonna do next? Um, well, we can we can get the throttle out and uh, check it out. This you can usually shoot air up in in here and they'll come out sometimes, but sometimes you just gotta cut them, which I may do that with this one, but. We'll see because, uh, you know, I got both new ones, so let's go ahead and dig them out. Sorry you didn't see that. Whoops, I was messing with this up here. So, but, uh, the kill switch. All right, let's, um, let's work on the throttle. So here's our throttle. Yeah, a couple goodie bags today, huh? There's the grips. What is going on? Look, that looks like it was used. Look at that. See the difference? Jesus Christ. What is people selling anymore? That is definitely a used grip or one that someone's tried to put on before. Jesus, man. God, that makes me mad. You know, you're paying full price for something that someone's already had their grubby hands on. You got to spend a half an hour cleaning it up. That's bullshit. All right, let me clean that up. All right, guys, so sorry about that. But I know, I know exactly what my haters are going to say. What do you expect? Well, I expect new products that I pay for new products. I expect them not, I expect them to be new. Not, you know, something that someone's already had their damn grubby hands on. That's what I expect. I, I expect when I buy a new product, I expect it to be new, and I expect it to be what, they're, what they claim it is. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah, there's no... There's absolutely no sense in that one at all i gotta get a phillips screwdriver now these phillips screws are actually phillips so this i'm gonna go up in here And start rain. I'm gonna have to. I just get a tarp out and cover this stuff up. And this is gonna go down in. Down in there like that. And then this grubby ass thing. want to go is it even going to fit right. 
Yeah. What do you expect? <laughs> what do you expect when you buy something? All right, I gotta clean that handlebar up because it's pretty nasty looking. So I'm gonna get some sandpaper and just clean that up real quick. I'll show you and then we'll get this put on. Whoops. But, yeah, pretty grubby. So let me get that cleaned up. The reason why that's gotta be cleaned up like that is because this has to spin. Your twist throttle has to spin on there. So, let me see, I got a little bit of 90 weight I'm gonna put on there. Just to give it a little bit of, doesn't take a lot. Some guys will use grease, you can use Vaseline, it doesn't matter, whatever. I just use this, it stays on pretty good. Wipe that off up there. Let me go wash my hands so I don't dirty up my new grips. All right, I'm back. Let's put on here. Well, I guarantee you that's not as long as they freaking said it was. You're not gonna, you can't tell me that this is four feet long. There's no, no freaking way that's four feet long. That ain't even three feet. I wanted to get long, get extra in case you know. I had to route this a certain way, which looks like I'm gonna have to now. See that? That's bullshit. There's no way. No way that's 48 inches. There's no damn way that is 48 inches. From there to there. It's not 48 inches. That is not four feet. I don't know. I'll turn around back if that'll help me any, but then it's kind of dicking with the tank, so I kind of just wanted. Freaking ridiculous. I guess it's going to have to run up under here. Guess that's what's going to have to do. Alright. Okay, so I can go ahead and tighten this down now. I'll tell you what, man. You just can't buy anything anymore that's worth a damn. Well, why don't you buy the expensive stuff? I can't afford the expensive stuff. Jesus. Well, yeah, it's going to have to go... Something like that. I 
Okay. All right, now let me get this figured out how I'm going to set this up. Maybe just drill that out so that can go through and put a clip on that end or something. Now I'll make a little clip or a piece of wire or something to hold that on there. And hopefully that will give me enough throttle. Let's see. Yeah, that'll give me enough. So, and I'll tighten this up wherever I need to put it. Put that about right there. Yeah. That'll work good. I could have slotted that bottom and slid that in, um, like, countersunk this hole up here and then slid that up in there and it would have stayed in there. I'm also going to put... A spring back here just in case you know if this comes off there's no return spring here so I'll put a spring back here that way if that of course this is going to be tighter you know it's not going to be loose like that but that way if it does fall out, see that, there's nothing to, so I'll put a spring on that as well. I'll bring, see there's a hole here. I'll probably go from here to there or something like that. We're getting close, guys. All right, now. this back through here again so we can get this set might as well do that while I'm right here probably put it about right there and I don't have the right oh man alright let me tighten that down okay so I got a throttle hooked up here. Extra return spring. So I gotta get that that one put on and give me a kill switch hooked up here. This is for the motor. This was for the one up on the handlebars, which that's probably the one I'm gonna use. So I'll get this hooked up. Uh, wherever the wire is coming out of here, it's one of these that kills it. Um, let's see. And then we'll give it a try. Try it out. If it works good, we'll put the fancy looking stuff on. I still want to get this like tidied up, you know, before it gets sold and 
clean it up a little more, you know, shine the fenders up a little bit. And ride it a little bit to, you know, make sure it's going to run all right. That's a little close, but I can, uh, I can do something about that. It's not a big deal. But yeah, that, uh, so, oh, here's the one. There's the wire. This will go down, hook into one of these, and then one of these will hook to the ground. So, let me get that straight. I mean, that's, you know, that's nothing. And then, uh, we'll fire it up. Make sure it's going to run all right. Make sure this chain's going to stay on. You know, stretch the chain out a little bit and then readjust it before it gets sold. But look, look pretty good. So I got story time for you. Let me set you down here. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I walked in the garage to grab, like I said, I was going to tighten that up. To grab something tighten that up and i seen a car a little suv going past you know normal speed you know about 25 and uh then all at once i seen it whoa, slow down right there i seen seen it backing up and it stopped just right on the other side of the toyota over there this guy gets out and he comes walking up i was like how you doing doing good how are you i said fine He's got, he's got a go-kart that he needs worked on. It's got electrical issues. And uh, just one of those um, Chinese ones. But I guess it's it's a full size. You know, it's like a, it's an adult size. It, it's a 65 mile an hour cart. He's having trouble with it. And uh, he's also got an old, uh, a vintage 76, I think he said. Um... Kawasaki or Yamaha an old dirt bike it needs it runs and runs good it just needs some nitpicking stuff done on it and the shifters a little loose and stuff like that but <laughs> so I got his name and number he lives out by the river so where we take the boat and where we go camping and fishing he lives out there so uh, I'm gonna go look at that stuff for him but he says she said his wife said Man, he spotted you from the road. They're driving past. And she was driving. And he looked over. He said, stop, stop, stop. And she said, what? And she pulled over real quick. That's why I seen him stop real quick. He said, there's a guy back there working on a mini bike. I want to go talk to him. <laughs> so anyway, you know, give me a little extra, a little extra spending money or something. Pay a bill or whatever. But. You know, so that's that's pretty cool. Meet people like that, and uh, so yeah, let me get get the kill switch hooked up, and um, I did put that extra spring on there, so it's got two return springs on it, and we'll warm it up. Might adjust the carb a little bit. Um, that's kind of a pain to get into there on that one, but you know, little tiny screwdriver. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna hook that up and then we'll fire it up and and then we'll go from there and see how it runs and uh, if it pulls me halfway decent, I know it'll pull a kid. So I mean, it it pulled me up the road slowly, but it pulled me up this hill here. That's a pretty good size hill. It doesn't really show up good on camera, but it's pretty pretty good size hill here. But on the straightaway, man, that thing was rolling, boy. I mean, I just barely given it gas. I know I was doing 25, that little engine. So um, it might do 20, maybe 24. Um, but hopefully it'll have some torque, and then you know it'll make make some kid a good, you know, a nice little bike. Uh, and like I said, I got a new plug to put in it. So, but let's just see how how it's going to pan out first. Make sure that cable's not. You know going to catch on anything and um we'll fire it up here in just a minute so for you guys it'll just be a second but for me you know it'll take me a minute and then we'll see what happens look at that second brand new carburetor
All right, let's try to run it anyway. And that'll start, I started up, made sure I had the switch on right. All right. Well, of course, now it's flooded. Jesus. How hard is it for a company to build something that fucking works? All right, let's try that again. All right, chain popped off. So let me see. Kind of sound like it's rubbing on something. Uh, let me get that straightened out. All right, guys, I don't have my wireless mic on, but I adjusted that chain. This ain't making sense. Something ain't straight. All right, hang on. Alright guys, so I'm going to be done for the day. Um, the wheel had kind of a wobble in it. And I thought it was this... Uh, I thought I didn't get this back sprocket on straight. So when I spun it, it looked like the, the sprocket was doing funny thing. Well, I, I seen earlier... Uh, this little thing here. Yeah. yeah, I seen that little thing laying there. I thought, what the hell's that? Seen something like that before. Anyway, I got to looking this bearing for the hub. Shot. Now I know where this piece came from. 
it goes on here. Goes on there like that. But it's broke, so I gotta get a bearing. The other bearings, it feels okay. It's a little noisy, but that's the seal part. Someone's had this bearing out of here at one time because that's where they screwed up and that's what screwed up this bearing I can see that's a screwdriver mark so when you drive these out you want to get to the edge uh, let's say like, like right here to the edge with a punch or something you can use a screwdriver if you're careful and knock it out someone's slipped and that's what caused that and there's There's grease in there, it feels like rubber until you squeeze it and then you can tell it's old grease. And I can't hardly spin that. So I think that was the problem why my chain was coming off. Wasn't holding the wheel straight. The wheel straight, chain's not straight. So like when I put it on there and looked at the chain, it was straight, but when it's spinning, you know, your wheel's kind of going like this. That'll knock your chain off. The engine sounds good. I'm not sure why I'm getting bad carburetors because that carburetor's from a totally different company. Who now I gotta get a hold of and chew their ass. Man, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tired of paying for stuff that ain't no good. You know, I'm just tired of it. I'm gonna get my money back every damn time, you know? And there ain't gonna be none of this. They have a habit of well, can you take a picture of it? Can I take a picture of the damn thing running? You know? Jeez. A leak? How can you take a picture of it leaking? You know? Jeez. I got one carburetor I had problems with on the old Simplicity. It wasn't running right. Didn't want to idle. Can you, can you send us pictures? I said, you mean video? No, we have no way of playing video. Can you send us pictures? How can I send you pictures of something not running right? You know, and then they always, how about we, we refund you 30%? No, how about not? Because it's unusable. If it's unusable, why am I still gonna pay you something for it, you know? I mean, damn. And that's, it's, that's not just leaking, that, I mean, that's the float. There's something wrong with the float. I shouldn't have to take the damn thing apart and fix it before I put it on. Jeez. Don't make sense. It's not rebuilt. It's a brand new carburetor. Yeah, granted it's cheap, but come on, man. Jesus. I mean, it's not like I gave $2 for it. And still, even if I did, you know, I'm buying something supposed to work. I burnt my head on the... Right in there. I was bent down looking at that chain and got my head up against the header. But, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's ignorant. You know, I'm just tired of, you know, paying money for stuff that ain't no good. Because after a while, that, that adds up, you know. You pay $5 for something, you know, that, that, you know, that ain't no good and you say all oh, the heck with it. You do that 10 times, there's 50 bucks. You know, well, that's what, yeah. You know, come on, man. That's 50 bucks. I don't do that shit, you know. If, if it ain't right, you're going to hear about it. And, you know, send me a return label. I'll send it back. I'm not paying for return shipping. And I'm not going to settle for this. How about we'll refund you at 30% and we'll just call it even, you know. And you, you can keep the carburetor. I don't want to keep the carburetor. We'll have to buy another carburetor. See what I mean? That's what I told that last company. I still got to buy another carburetor. So you're going to be making money on a piece of shit. You're going to be making my money on a piece of shit. You know, that I can't use, you know. But, yeah, it sounds good when you rev it up wide open. It sounds really healthy, the, the motor, you know. But, yeah, so I'm done for today. I'm gonna see if I can order a couple of these bearings. I might as well put them both in while I got this this apart. I'll save the other one because it's still okay. It's just a little noisy, but you know I can use it on something. I'm sure. But um, this one definitely I cannot. You know I could probably clean it out, 
but when it's making your wheel go like that, you know, it's just going to cause the other one to go bad, and, you know, it's just going to cause more problems, and I'm not into causing more problems, you know what I mean? I'm into fixing problems. So, we were close. I rode it, but the chain kept coming off. And then it got worse, and I'm like, man. Because I thought, man, if it, if it was that, that sprocket, you know, it would have just done it all the time. But I got it to where, you know, I could ride it around and everything, as long as I didn't go real fast. This thing's pretty quick. It'll probably do between 28 and 30. Um, but, yeah, so I thought... It should just do it no matter what. You know, I'd just stay on sometimes and sometimes start coming off. Uh, if it was a sprocket. So I took it off and I checked. It was a little off, but we're talking, you know, one or two thousandths. Not enough to make that chain come off like that. I thought, man, what is going on? Tried to adjust the motor and get that chain straight, you know, and then go to back it up and it just, like, kind of like it was wanting to bind up. Man, something's not right here, you know. And then I just I took the chain off and I just spun that wheel and I could see that wheel going like that. And I thought, man. So I got to looking at the between the wheel and the sprocket, and it was running true, just a little bit off. It was running true, but when I looked at the sprocket between the frame, and when I looked at the side that don't have the sprocket, you know, it was running true. And the sprocket was running true with the wheel, and I thought maybe the wheel was bent. No, the wheel's not bent, but when I got to looking at the sprocket up here, and that's where that bearing is, and between sprocket and frame, I could see it. So that's what it was doing. Alright guys, well anyway, hope you enjoyed story time. But, yeah, that's, uh, I'm pretty impressed with that little three horsepower engine, man. That's, that thing's got some balls. Um... It would wheelie if I wanted it to, but you know, if I put my weight back on it, it would wheelie. But uh, yeah, it's it's got plenty of power, so uh, yeah, it'll make a kid a good little cart, you know, so or a good little bike once I get it straightened out. So, hey right, guys, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna play a clip of monkeys. She had something very strange happen, and. I'll have to do kind of a backstory on it before I show it to you, but I want to get that clip off of her tonight and, and make you a video of that. It's it's strange. It's very strange. I, I don't know what was going on, but I'll explain that to you later. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Shea Bear, the Myth, the Man, the Legend. I'm gone for now. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.